Hello everyone, Crydex here. Welcome back to our Nullius playthrough. It's a morning stream for any of you who are here on Twitch. Got our coffee, which is great. Carbon dioxide and oxygen building up. Wastewater that we need to get rid of. All sorts of good stuff. Um, as I'm trying to ask questions at the beginning of every video, uh, the next question is one that's on my mind lately. What is your favorite season? For me, it is definitely become fall recently and winter's on its way here in Colorado. So I'm curious what you guys have as a favorite season because depending on where you live, it could be very different. Um, but for me, I think spring is generally my favorite or maybe late spring, but fall is pretty great too with the nice weather and the leaves turning beautiful colors. I really enjoy that. So what's your favorite season? Leave a comment and let me know. And we also seem to have encountered some sort of issue here with our glass. We have no more silica, and that's because... Ah, the stone. I'm not doing anything with the stone. So we need to route that stone back down to the main stone factory. I think that's what I want to do with it. Is there anything else I should do with it? I could turn it into gravel right here. Um... Well, we do have HC... I guess I could use it to void the HCL. Hmm. That's an actual thought. So... 0.53 a second, though, isn't enough to void that amount of HCL. So I think it's better if we just hook up the systems the way that they're meant to be hooked up. Problem is, I'm running out of room for belts, but... Uh, I guess for now, we'll just say whatever and figure it out. <laughs> oh, one belt going this way, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a bit messy. Okay. How are my bots doing, by the way? Oh, we are out of bots. Oh, is that because I just walked back in range and they're giving me a million things? I bet it is, yeah. Since I built everything. Okay. Well, let's give them a minute to catch up and see what happens. And then... I also want my science to get over there so I don't have to ferry science anymore. I'm, I'm very tired of doing that, so definitely going to be done ferrying science from here on out. Alright, so then this is where the stone joins in. And we probably should have that on both sides of the belt, but I think it's a small enough amount that I don't really have to care. So that should be okay. And let's make sure the green science is running again. Yeah, that's not very much stone at all. Yep, green science is running. Beautiful. And then we need to hook this up. Both of these, I guess. Need an overflow. Yeah. Yeah, that only runs when it needs to because of the... What is that? Hydrogen chloride? Sodium hydroxide? <laughs> so many chemical names. Um, okay, so that's all running. That's the sand needed for the silica, which is... Doop -doo -doo. Um, so I guess what would be good is to check on a couple things like the silica. I could use productivity in this, right? That saves me a little bit of sandstone. And then here, uh, 1.52. Oh, I didn't even need two crushers in the first place. So that's 1.79 sandstone versus two. 
So that's, you know, 10% savings. Something like that. I think that's worth it over time. You know, these things add up. I think I can put stuff in those as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So, less limestone that way. Um, now, the water-based ones, because water's infinite and so is air, I mainly just want efficiency in all this so that I save some power. And then these are all air and water-based products, I believe, right? Ammonia is just hydrogen and nitrogen. Yeah, yeah. So can't put anything in those, but we can put more efficiency here. Same story here, same story here. This one actually has silicon ingots, so there are raw materials. So let's throw some yield modules into this guy. And same here, I guess. I mean, we don't need a lot of the sulfur dioxide, but. Um, and then where's the methanol producer? Because we seem to be out of methanol and out of methane and out of hydrogen, which doesn't seem like that should be the case because we're out of water. We're out of water because... I'm not actually sure. Maybe we used up too much to make sulfuric acid. Because didn't we result in ending up with lots of spare water, so that should be the one that we have to vent, not brine. But I guess we'll vent brine one more time. Maybe it'd be best if I um, put a small tank. Where are those at? In the water network. Just so that we have a bit more water that can store up before it starts to overflow here at 30%. Because this is also a top up to 40%, so that way just a bit more water will be stored in the network, and I think that will help out with all of this stuff. Because once it all settles down, it should work fine, I believe. Okay, uh, anyway, we need to connect these two up to their overflows. Um... I'm going to put this at 10% simply because I don't have a need for it at all in the first place. And this one I'll put at 40% because we do need the HCl gas for the methanol lubricant stuff. So then those need to be um, piped down to over here where everything's hooked up with those gases. And I actually want them to be parallel, so let's attach those there. And then those can go down one more step. And then they need to go over right about here. So we can use some undergrounds. Get rid of the sandstone and limestone and a bunch of barrels. And then we'll turn a corner. Okay. Then put a couple more. Looks like this is going to work. Okay, so then we want our hydrochloric acid to dump into this guy with a pump. You know what? Small pumps could be handy. It looks like I can craft them, so... When I know the pumping speed that I need is not going to be huge. Because that way it drains out the previous pipe and kind of accomplishes a one-way valve at the same time. 
because I definitely want a one way there. And then the HCl gas, we just want to get dumped into here. Same story. So that will be attached and voila. And this system hopefully can handle all of the needs that I have um, with HCl. I'll definitely want to come down here and change the recipe now that I'm thinking about it. So many things to do. So I can check green science off the list. Um, upgrading gravel voiding, upgrading other sciences, and then I feel like there's one other small thing I was about to do. What was it? Uh, actually, that might be it. What else was I... Oh. Yeah, I have no lights. Uh, what else was I about to do up here? I think, oh, just connect the sciences. Okay. Connect sciences. I'm not going to spell that right, and that's fine. <laughs> I don't care to fix it. Uh, but these guys can switch to a different recipe. So previously, we had gravel into mineral dust which we get three-fourths mineral dust per gravel. This only gets us one-half mineral dust per gravel, which is actually two-thirds of what we got before. So that means I only have to get rid of two-thirds as much, which is a pretty big savings in terms of how much of the other stuff I have to make, HCL. Um, and sand is much easier to get rid of. And so I'm going to switch all these which is going to have a pretty big impact, but I had already set up the sand um, outputs here. And so I think we just want fast inserters on these outputs. And then we'll just uh, flip flop every one, make sure these are all tier two, and this probably will handle, yeah, 21 gravel per second. So that's plenty uh, up to seven sand now the sand is interesting because I actually use sand in a variety of places and I want to make sure that it kind of goes back into the loop sand gets used well this it starts here but this is created to be sand if the logistics is too small and then we see sand appear from making stone bricks and then it shows up here and then it goes down to here where i apparently forgot i had already set up sand uh voiding over there um, also these can be tier two, but I guess one issue is that I'm really not reading or getting back sand. So I want this sand. Yeah. I'll put priority right to actually come back into the network before we just void it. Now this can void up to four sand a second. It looks like. Um, I think we have lots of seawater on this one. Yeah, we got one of the big pumps. So we're, we're not going to run out of seawater. Let's just make sure this is a hydro plant too. We don't have on our hot bar yet. So then that can handle eight sand a second. And the wastewater will add in... another outfall just in case we need more outfall capacity okay so then this sand will come back um that's stone that's getting put back in how's it going b jonas good morning uh the red advanced fluid handling pipe Oh, you know what? That's a great question. 
Uh, let's find out. Does it talk about the fluid box here? Um, do do do. Drawing box, bounding box, collision bounding box. Oh, there's a lot of things here. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Fluid box prototype. I assume that's what it is. Height 1.2. There we go. Base area 1, height 1.2. So let's find out if uh, that's the same as this. Go down. Oh, geez. That's a lot of things. Fluid box prototype 1 and 1.2. Yep. So these advanced fluid pipes are exactly the same as far as I can tell. Let's check maybe like these guys as well. Uh, fluid box prototype 1 and 1.2. Oh, compare it to the underground pipe too. That one I think is slightly different actually. But he said he changed it back. Yeah, yeah, that's the same too. One and one point two. So it looks like all these are exactly the same in terms of pipe flow. I think he and Akrony um, had had the undergrounds a little different, but then he patched that to be a little bit more in line. And maybe it's only tier one now where the undergrounds are different. I'm not actually sure. In any case, we want this sand. This is uh, a lot of belt spaghetti here. Here, let's give myself some space. By doing that. And then the sand will kind of come back up around and input priority right is what I want here. Actually, no, input priority left. This is sand I need to get rid of anyway. This is sand I have to get rid of. So this is just some extra sand that th gets thrown in and will get voided. I actually probably should delete this and connect this back up to here. And then the sand can go on a magical journey to get voided, but that way it gets voided the same way. Uh, you're correct about the lane priority, except with the way I have it set, we're giving priority to the one coming in, so it doesn't really matter, I don't think. Because as long as I'm voiding this, it should always be empty on the output. Ah, inventory full. Cool beans. Bots are going to have their jobs full. Okay, so then this just comes back over here and gets voided as well. So that should be fine. So basically that's just throwing the sand that we get from this back into the logistics network before we void it, is really all I did there. Because that belt will eventually fill up, which is what we want. Alright, that uh, chest is what I meant to say. Uh, and we should also connect our logistics a bit, a bit further here, since now I have a lot of personal requests that the logistics bots need to fulfill. I keep them busy. Okay, so I think that fixes all the stone stuff. And we've upgraded gravel voiding so that we require less hydrochloric acid. Now what's tricky is if the goal is to get rid of hydrochloric acid, we actually, well, it looks like we are making extra, so. So we do want the upgraded recipe because this way we have to create less to get rid of everything. Now would yield modules help at all? I don't think so. Yield modules would help here is actually the one place it would change things. Although this is made... I guess the only cost of this is electricity, right? So I probably actually just want efficiency. At some point though, this is the most expensive part of the process. Hmm. I'm actually not... Not 100% sure which way is more efficient, even... Where are my electrolyzers? Even in terms of electricity, it might be cheaper. Because this is the thing that costs the most electricity, it might be cheaper to use yield on these. 
because yeah, I, I'm imagining that's actually saving electricity rather than spending it, but I could be wrong. Um, and these guys, obviously electricity is the main thing. We'll just save, save a bit on every step. That should help out a little bit. Okay. And we'll just add in the other one. I guess we have to copy that and flip it here. There we go. So we could handle up to 24 gravel a second. I don't think we could handle 12 mineral dust though, can we? Actually we can, we can handle 14. And this just doesn't quite make enough HCL to support that, but with the other HCL coming in from outside, that might actually be fine. Okay, so that I think is a wrap on improving those systems. Let's get rid of some old tier one buildings. Just put them back into the logistics system so they'll get fed into their respective places. Okay, so now I wanna connect my sciences up. So purple science, we're gonna connect that. So we'll have that come across. And I guess we'll use undergrounds, save some space, and then how do we get back in here? Probably this way. Okay. Uh, well, this is an interesting... Why don't I just do this? <laughs> that works. Uh, although, apparently, I have no inventory space. Um, and then purple. Uh, this is really kind of tight. Wow. So if I could get purple science to come, well, and I have a fifth science coming, which this, yeah, this is this is not gonna work. We need we need science labs to be somewhere else. Um, uh, let's start by putting all this away, and I'm gonna disconnect all this. Yeah, and then purple science comes down and across, and then we'll just put it in a chest here. Oops, wrong direction, close side, there we go. Like that, transfer it all over. Okay, and then let's just go outside the base and give myself some more room here. That does mean green science is going to have to go on a long journey as well. Maybe I should go up, up here. That's probably a bit smarter. So we'll turn these around, which means I'll have to make a couple changes. Uh, we don't even, I guess we start there, and then we come up here, and then don't need that, there we go, and then uh, basic colors come up here, and we'll try to wind our way up through this, which sounds like a mess. Uh, can we even make this happen? I guess we'll do this one first. Uh, 
Okay. This one is free. And then the basic ones. Guess we'll just have go this way. And then that's free right here. Okay. A bit messy, but that's fine. And then we'll bring green science over because that's up here. And this area seems pretty empty, so I guess labs here is not the worst idea. Generally, labs being out of the way is good, though. I should grab some more. I want more than six. And I have them automated somewhere. Probably down here. Yep. There we go. Uh, I think 20 is a good start. We can always come back for more later. And then I'm going to want productivity and all those, so I need 40. 40 yield modules. Let's restock our modules. Do do do. Okay. So then. Oh, come on. Of course, that needs to be exactly where it is. Shift all these down. And then. Let's see. Can I do three lanes like this? Probably. Eight inserter, well, does this work? I think with my inserter configurations, I can probably make this work. Okay, so we can do that. And then this. And then this one will be this. Oop, no, wrong extent, extend that way. Actually, this won't work unless I build substations. Because that's actually the wrong... You know what? Let's make this a little easier on ourselves and just use the extra space. And then I don't have to worry about that. We'll just do this, extend, and extend. And then I guess we will want to put a power pole somewhere. So we'll do an underground there. Okay, that should do it. And we'll put a power pole there, and then we'll just copy this block. That's four, eight, 12, 16. Okay. Connect that up to power. Get the sciences hooked up. science and at this point I guess I'll just have it enter from this side not backwards and that does need to go into a chest so it can store up a little bit we'll just let it run okay so now we are ready for green science and what shall our first green science be? Well, I only have a few choices. So we get a new air separation recipe, which nets me some residual gas, which then can be turned into argon and trace gas. And argon can be used for who knows what. 
Better furnaces would be nice, better metals. I think I'll just start with that. And sodium processing. So that lets me create seawater out of fresh water, which is kind of funny. It lets me get salt out of brine. Salt can be used to make sodium and chlorine. And sodium hydroxide can be used to make sodium. So that means we have a new, well, we, I guess we could void, wait, can sodium, no, okay. I was going to say, can sodium be turned back into salt? And it doesn't look like it can. I was going to say that would be a new way to void stuff, but, okay, and we need quite a few things for battery one that I don't have yet. Um, well, let's just start with these three basics. Nanotechnology gets me a nano fabricator, which looks very expensive. Feel like, oh yeah, this is something we wanted big time. Um, this lets us get graphite just from methane. And that's a way easier way to get graphite. And it also gets us some new uh, pyrolysis cracking recipes, which I'll have to dive into that a little bit. But, uh, oh, the yield modules. Hold up. Gotta get that extra 6%. Oops. Uh, where'd they go? Here. Okay. So, does this tell me? It does not tell me research speed. But it's definitely a lot faster. These all research at 1.08, so 20 times that is 20. 21.6, is that right? I think that's right. So, that's a bit faster, and probably too fast. These recipes still take one pack per 30 seconds, and so we're using close to one pack. I guess we're using about 0.6. Maybe this is still roughly the right number of labs. So now I just need to upgrade the other sciences to produce 0.6 per second, which is a bit larger of an undertaking. Um, the blue is probably the easiest. I think I might have a new way to make climate samples already. Um, yeah, here we go. So... So we want 0.6 of everything per second, because that's what I did for this, right? Yeah, 0.6. So, the other science is, I want 0.6 using this method. I need quite a few hydro plants and air filter twos. Uh, if I want to use the other recipe, climate sample. I don't know why they don't show up for the English names sometimes. I want to use this one. Hit six. And we'll just use the new air separation. Is that better? The new air separation makes less CO2 and less nitrogen. However, it makes more CO2 per air. So if you look at the input air, 150 goes to 40, here 100 goes to 30, which is more. Um, and then 100 goes to 66, whereas here 150 goes to 90. So we actually get more nitrogen, more CO2 per input air, but in terms of distilleries, we'll need more of them because the actual output is a little bit less, but it's not a huge difference. So we save some air filters, use some more distilleries. Distilleries are the big ones though, so it's definitely not great. And then we have to deal with residual gas, but I'm assuming we want residual gas to be available. So I will use that recipe. Um, and then air is just the classic air recipe. Not difficult there. But then we need some wastewater and some volcanic gas. Volcanic gas we already have. 
And how do we produce wastewater on command? That's a bit trickier. Probably the easiest way would be fresh water. We actually just use wells to make fresh water and that, that can make wastewater on demand and then we just avoid the extra pure water which feels horrible. But I mean, honestly, this power cost is pretty small at the end of the day Get compared to, you know, the other things I need power for. So that's not the worst thing in the world. And then volcanic gas, I guess, comes from a couple other things. But uh, we just have it being pumped out. So this, you know, power cost is way lower. The number of buildings is way lower. So this is clearly the route I want to go. Um, do we save power if I use yield modules? Not really. Do we save buildings? Also not really. So I guess that's not really worth it. But let's go ahead and make a bunch more of climate samples. And let's do that up here since I have volcanic gas in this area. This should be a pretty small build. I feel like water is something that... I'm like, should I just have a centralized water system? where all of the excess water gets pumped into this big tank area and then gets pumped out, overflows possible, stuff like that. But that just doesn't seem worth it. I mean, the power cost, especially if I use efficiency modules, the power cost of water is not that high. So I feel like I'd actually just end up wasting, wasting time to set that system up. And I, I honestly don't think it's worth it. Now, residual gas, on the other hand, we do want, and so we're actually going to shift that to be the next research. Because we are... Looks like out of green science. What's going on? I thought I fixed all the problems here. Soda ash, got no ammonia. Ammonia. Uh, okay, we've clearly got a problem. Did I just unhook it? Oh, this just got shifted over by one. Gosh dang it. There we go. Okay, I was like, we've got plenty of ammonia. Okay, well my green science stopped for a minute, so that's not good. This needs 160, so that'll take a few minutes of production. But we should see glass ramping back up. Now, what I should have done is made extra glass from this to dump back into the logistics network. I think I actually did... Hold on. Let me check on that. Yeah, we only needed two. And not even a full two. So adding a third does mean that we should have some extra output glass. But the question is, the soda ash and ammonia and all these other things, did we have enough extra to support that? And it really looks like we do. Um, the only thing that we might be slightly short on would be sand, but I have two of those. So all of the stuff in here can easily handle an extra 50% glass output. Um, let me just check on the ammonia. Yeah, that's more than fine. We can basically get double out of that. Most of these buildings were well under half of a building, so... Yeah. So that what that means is our glass, we can prioritize it to go right. But extra glass will come down here. And uh, we'll go around. And I'm out of belts. Okay, good. We've got plenty, we just need to get them delivered. 
I'll stand right next to it. Ta-da! Alright. So then glass can come back in. And... Uh, where were we? Here. Get a bit closer and provide... Actually, should I make a storage? For well, I shouldn't make storage. But what this means is my regular glass maker needs to have a condition on it. Here. Is that even connected to anything? Oh yeah, it's right here. Okay. I was like, what the heck? Um, so this guy, we want to logistically stop if glass is greater than, I guess, a thousand. So that way we'll prioritize the cheaper, uh, less resource intensive glass. That is being extra output from this system, which is taking a second to back up because it had stopped in the first place. Okay, so that's all great. Back to this. Do 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 distillery has some outputs I didn't quite see what they were going to be so CO2 is on the right so nitrogen is here and then I guess we can move this closer even uh, and then wastewater is going to be here. I guess we need one more space. And then I'm just going to outfall freshwater, which feels really weird. But I just don't think that's actually that big of a cost. You know, if I look at the power here, especially if I put efficiency, you know, that's 120 kilowatts that I'm using for all this. Oh, wait, and a well has a module slot too? Oh, yeah, okay. We are basically using no power. So I'm not I'm not too worried about that. If anything, the biggest annoyance is the, uh, the size of the outfalls. I'm going to need two outfalls for this technically three but it's close enough and i haven't put yield on this so maybe maybe the one yield module will that that way it won't require two outfalls i guess that's why i need a yield module because then my output water is less than 200 a second there we go so then we just need one yield module i guess that means i might as well put efficiency in the other now this has unlocked air separation 2. And when do I get outfall 2? I guess I need to look at the tech tree, not this. Well, no, this this works too. Come on, Great X. It is inventing 2, which is soon. Okay. And we can make both chimney 2s and outfall 2s. Okay. So that'll be handy because then I don't need to worry about a bunch of outfalls for high speed fluids. But that will take care of the water. Two wells. I guess if we're fitting it into this shape, I can just go here. And then turn a corner. And then volcanic gas will bring in. Now, I do just want to vent the CO2. Okay, and then volcanic gas we'll just have here. And let's go one square above this sulfur dioxide.
Okay, throw another T shape in there, and there we got volcanic gas. I think that's it, right? Oh, and the air filter. Which is also not on my hotbar yet. It needs to go here. And I did only need one, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is clearly a much more compact build. I can easily improve it as well. And then that will get me plenty of climate science. I should come down. And I guess in this case, we will have to come around the science doohickeys. And let's see. We'll have input priority right. And then make sure it's on the correct side of the belt. Do something like that. Okay. So then that should support all my climate science needs. And then we still have three more to deal with. The purple one is the one I'm the most worried about. We're going to have to do some big improvements on purple science. Um, the red and yellow shouldn't be too hard. Do do do. Okay, am I going to need to call it an episode soon? Maybe I can get yellow science working first. Oh, and then residual gas, right. I need to take care of that. So residual gas, we are going to have a central pipeline for that. Which we'll put in a big tank. And that's just in the way. Um, so pipeline in will be at the top as with normal stuff. We will have an overflow at 90. Just copy this. And yep, that should work. I mean, I guess I could just put that there and then attach. That's better. All right, and that can be voided, so I don't have to worry about anything there. So now we've got residual gas building up, which is good. Now, should I just compress it? Is there, let's look at the difference. So residual gas is used in just this recipe, argon, trace gas, and water. This is also used in that same thing, except it gives me steam. Oh, there's a lot of green science before I get to that recipe. So yeah, we'll just do residual gas for now. But I could end up regretting that, who knows. Okay, so then back to this one. We had 0.6 was our goal. We now have medium assembler twos. Um, and here we would want to use yield modules for sure. So that's our current build. And then if we want, oops, uh, product. Now we have a new, new sheriff in town. How much cheaper is it? 0.6. Uh, let's see. We'll get that from crushing iron ore, we'll get that from crushing bauxite, we'll get that from... So basically we have to crush everything. Crushing sandstone, crushing limestone, this is crazy, and then mineral dust from crushing gravel. Um... 
But first I want to be crushing stone as well. So gravel comes from crushing stone. And then matrix solver? Nope, that did not work. Um, why are you making so much crushed iron ore? Because it's making all the gravel from stone. So I guess the mineral dust, we need a way to get that from probably limestone as well. There we go. Okay, so comparing these two, we've got a total of what? 0.28, I'm just gonna use a calculator. Uh, 0 0.28 plus 0 0.43 plus 0 0.31 plus 1.81 is 2.83 raw ore. And this is clearly more than that. 1.14 times 3 is 3.42. We didn't even put productivity in here. Um, let's go ahead and do that and put productivity in here. Also worth noting, it's just way faster. weird that this is like one that you can't put productivity in but you can with everything else so now these numbers 5 plus 0.38 plus 0.27 plus 1.53 only 2.43 so that's significantly less raw ores half the power and technically more buildings but scale scaling up a lot more easily you know, if we go off of a similar limitation, uh, you can't boost it up, I guess. Interesting. I wish if you put two, it would just scale everything up to two rather than not scale. I mean, I guess I could just put that to a huge number and then see like, okay, with three of them, I'm just starting to get to where I would need two crushers on one of the things. And that would give me 1.44 mineral sample per second. So all that to say, we are absolutely going to go with this because this is way better. We just need all the ores in one place. And then this will be a very easy build. So I'll pin this because it is kind of tricky. Thankfully, everything works out. So I don't need any voiding of anything. Um, I think the only thing is bauxite's not down here, but we, we can build this down south because I have, I have iron ore, I have limestone, and I have sandstone, so we just need to bring bauxite down. There are only four ores, right? I'm not, yeah, <laughs> not missing one. Um, so we need to bring bauxite down. Let's also, while we're here, improve... We need some miners. Where are they? They're down on the bottom left. So let's improve this mining build to get the whole patch. Because that's clearly gone wrong. And then we also need to just put this back on a belt or something. Um, okay, so let's get rid of all these. Why don't we use bots to help me out here? Okay. Because we're going to need all this at some point. So far, so good. Now these, I'm going to space out a bit more because I don't need a million miners for that. Fortunately, that electrolyzer is kind of in the way. And then we'll just sparsely put these last few. Oh, I need two more. They're within construction range, so I'll just let the bots bring those. Okay, 
Okay, so then this will come up around, run through this way. That way we can split off. And then it will run up past here. And then we run out of belts, but then it can come down to there. Perfect. We just gotta power it all up. Don't worry, I see it. I see it. It's right here. This has gotta join in. Oh, and then we gotta power these guys. And I think that gets every square of ore covered. Oh, I only have five construction bots. That's definitely a problem. Let's get some more going here. <laughs> That's definitely a problem. Let me grab some more belts. And then I guess what we want is this kind of just feeding in. Like so. Okay. That takes care of the bauxite. And then we still need to bring a belt of it down. Kind of want to bring that down on this stone line, because that's one way we could do it. Um, let's connect this up. Where else could I? I guess I could come through right here on the left. But then I'm building my science down here. Then it has to get all the way back up. I mean, I guess the science numbers are low enough. I could just transport the science with bots. That's not the worst thing in the world. Maybe I'll just do that. Yeah, okay. Action. Take action. Okay, we're not... Oh, I could just deconstruct all this. This is all useless. Okay, is my inventory ready for this? Probably not. We'll have to keep it, keep it trimmed as we go, but I am just gonna get rid of all this. I'm pretty sure all of this is unnecessary at this point. Oh gosh, I knew this would happen. Uh, gonna have to get rid of a million things. Oh, I gave up on my construction bots, that was stupid. Come back to me. I need 10 of them at least. Also, it looks like my bots aren't doing anything because we're in a main zone. How do I... Is that a setting? Uh... No. Can I not do that? Oh, uh, I really want my bots to still be running. Okay, maybe they are. Oh, jeez. This is painful. Maybe I should just let the network bots do it, but I feel like we gotta help. Those I don't want to go away. But yeah, this is pretty bad. This is definitely an undertaking. Maybe I should just let the other bots handle it. Oh, 
build a bit more storage. Probably should be more central, but some storage here. Some storage here. Anyway, that will free up enough room. I'm just going to keep building. Uh, we can always move this belt later if we'd like to, but we'll keep it next to this one. And then come down. And we've got plenty of space down here for our build. So, bauxite, sand, Stone is right here. Do this way. Boxite and sandstone, and then iron ore and limestone is like right here as well. So that's perfect. So iron ore. Oh, crap. <laughs> uh. Iron ore and limestone. Okay, that's all we need for our build. And we'll just get rid of a few other things so I can pick all this up. Get rid of it all at least. Oh boy, that's a lot of, oh, there's also a smart tool deconstruction planer I can get rid of. This is all still a mess, that's fine. Okay, yeah, we're definitely going long on the episode, but we should be able to finish this out. Because it's not too difficult. Just need to, uh... Get rid of a rock. My bots are gone. Never mind. Who knows where they are. Okay, so the four main ores. So we need an iron one. A bauxite one. I'm going to leave a space between each of these. Bauxite and sandstone are together. Iron and limestone are together. So let's start with that. And I'm pretty sure single inserter is fine for all this. Limestone's the only one with a somewhat high rate, but 1.53, 1.88, that's enough of a difference. They should be fine, even if it's a little wrong. Okay, so we've got stone, stone, now the crushed iron one is tricky. That has to be prioritized. So let's do this. You will be crushed iron on the left side. And then this guy will also be crushed iron, but we'll kind of prioritize by which square it's on. So he'll be crushed iron as well. And then that way this guy will always get the first dibs. So that's my crushed iron, which is actually one of the inputs. And then, so let's go ahead and put these here somewhere. Maybe further down. Maybe across? Yeah, put them over here. Ah, uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so then all of our stone needs to go into a gravel crusher, and all of my gravel goes into mineral dust. So, so stone into gravel, gravel into mineral dust. And then there's also mineral dust being added from crushed limestone. So crushed limestone, okay, we're getting there. So then this guy also has crushed bauxite. So we need one for that. 
Uh, there we go. Pull aside. Crush box. I go. And then sand is prioritized from this. So sand is here. And then this produces sand as well. But that way it'll prioritize this one. And then stone comes out of this. And this one. So stone there. Stone also comes out of this one. Uh, stone. There we go. Um, crap. Do I really not have something to get rid of these? I guess we can do that. There we go. Um, okay, so then stone comes down. Might as well save some belts there. And then we've got mineral dust. And then the crushed limestone is on its own belt. There. And that gets combined with... Uh, let's see, we need five things. So I guess sand. And then mineral dust. So we can put mineral dust on the close side here. Or on the far side. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's the things we need. And then we need to prioritize, and then we'll be done. Oh, and then I need one more pressure for the limestone into mineral dust. Which... Could be fine with. And then we need the mineral dust to be an addition... So this actually needs to get prioritized. So it's a little out of order. So instead, that 1.88 can handle all the limestone that we need. Um, so we'll put the additional mineral dust crusher here. Yeah, I think that actually works perfectly. So then we've got, bam, long inserters, and plenty of yellow signs. Come back up. Guess we'll use undergrounds. Uh, where? I guess we can just belt it straight up. There's plenty of room now. Um, yeah, look at this. Plenty of room. Okay, and then our science is up there, so let's go up. We'll, uh, Cut across the bauxite fields, and ta-da! Actually, I think I can just ditch all those, yep. And now we have extra, what are they called? Um, geological samples? Soil samples? Something like that. Uh, and then we want to input priority left on those. so many tiers uh, okay so then we'll store this same way and then uh, we want it to be on the left side does that work no that sure doesn't you can just put it on the right side to begin with let's go with that And by right, I mean left. OK. 
Okay. Ta-da! So then, put all those there. Get rid of the rest of these. And I think we've done it. 0.6 mineral samples per second. Or more. In fact, it'll be more, because all of these buildings are... Um, like, none of them are at a whole number. So we'll end up getting, like, 0.8 or 0.9 or something. And let me finish out that build, and then we will be done with this video. I think I'll stream a little bit more later today. But let's get... Oh my gosh. Random things out of my inventory. Oh, jeez. My trash slots are full. Um, that's fine, I guess. Okay, so... Put yield everywhere that it can go, and hopefully I did all the priorities right on these. It seems to be running without a hitch. I guess that's the slowdown was the inserter, so now that'll improve the rate a little bit. Probably need two of these then. There we go. That's better. Okay. So I think this is nice and dandy. Less power, less resources, much smaller footprint. We can easily copy that. So. The first two sciences, I think we're golden with. Let's put those new recipes. Let's pick all this up. Looks like the bots finally figured it all out, so that's good. Um, we switched all these to storage, which is good. We should switch these to storage as well. Basically, any old chests can just be changed to storage chests. Because who knows what's really going on with all of it anyway. And I still have some more things to deconstruct, but we at least got bulk of that old spaghetti mall. And I think with that, I will call it an episode. So, we still have two more sciences to upgrade with the red and the purple. And we probably will want to improve our aluminum production as soon as I get these new recipes. Because uh, aluminum is definitely one of the things I've been struggling with. And there's all sorts of other things. Oh, a new soda ash solution already. Is that even better, though? Soda ash 2 has a lot of byproducts. I guess we'll have to check it out in the next video. But thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you all next time.